Welcome everyone to this video. I will go over manual assembly, which is translating the assembly code into machine code. I'm going to go over the instruction widths, the instruction fields, and then I'll do a few examples, uh, one from the data processing, the branch, and multiple load store instructions. In essence, what I would like to show you is, let me pull that up. What I want to show you is, I want to show you how do we get those values that uh, you see in memory here. So uh, for example, if I have this program, which was part of something we've done before, I just modified it a little bit just to show you different types of instructions here. If I have a program and I'm writing these instructions in assembly, how do they get translated into what I see right here, this hex value, right? So this LDR instruction becomes E59F0008. Uh, this add instruction becomes E28111001. And so how do we get to, those, to these values, right? The, the assembler has been doing the job for us, but maybe we want to do it ourselves, or maybe we want to write our own assembler, or maybe we're debugging something and we'd like to know what's, what's going on. And it's good to know how the instructions work. And it's good to know how these different, like how does this number two affect the execution of this instruction? It doesn't have to be two, it could be something else. So how do we get these numbers, right? So I'm going to switch back to a slide here and then I'm gonna go back and forth between these two. So our architecture is 32 bits, meaning that all the instructions are going to be 32 bits. Our registers are 32 bits. The address bits are 32 bits. We have 32 bits for address or 32 bit address bus. We have 32 bit data bus. We have 32 bit registers. We have 32 bit instructions. Everything's 32 bits. So if you see here, you uh, the instructions, you will see that you have, this is bit number zero. This is bit number one, two, three, four, all the way up to bit number 31. And they are grouped into different fields. And each of these fields represents something uh, for this, for each type of instruction. Now, going back uh, to that program here, I wanted just to point out that these instruction are occupying four addresses in memory because they are 32 bits and 32 bits is four bytes and each address holds one byte. So in essence, each instruction will require or occupy uh, four addresses in memory. And that's why you see the first instruction is starting at address number zero. And the second one is at address number four, and then eight, and then C, and so on. So they go in increments of four. Okay, so that basically aligns with what we're what we're saying here that each instruction is thirty two bits. So uh, I won't cover every single type of instructions here, and I'm going to cover the data processing branch and load store multiple. And there is a benefit for this. Uh, we're familiar with the data processing. Uh, we've done the branch when we did the loop video, how you can loop back to uh, a label, for example. And then we didn't talk much about load store multiple. So maybe this will be a good way to talk, to introduce those instru these instructions and then actually show you how you can hand assemble them or manually assemble them into machine code. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this. So we can start with the data processing instruction. If you take a look here, you will see that this kind of instruction has multiple fields. And when we say data processing, we're talking about add, subtract, uh, move. Uh, we're talking about uh, also logical operations like and, XOR, OR, and so on. So you will see that all these instructions, they share this common breakdown. So they all have a condition field, which is the most significant four bits of the instruction, followed by a hard-coded zero, zero. Every time you write an add instruction or an XOR instruction, those two bits are always zero, zero. Followed by the I, opcode, S, R, N, R, D, and operand two. And I'll talk about those individual fields, uh, one, one field at a time. So we can start with the condition field the most significant four bits of every instruction are reserved for the condition. If you remember, again, in one of the videos when we talked about the loop, we only loop back under certain conditions. Let's say we're comparing two values. If they are equal, then we loop. Otherwise, we don't loop. Or the other way around. If they're equal, we 
do not loop, or otherwise we loop, right? So there's a condition, right? And the breakdown for, for this condition is given in this table. You can look it up online if you like. Uh, all this information actually is available online. But if you look here, you will see that the upcode for the the, code, the 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 four bits that are reserved for the condition, uh, they take every value from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 0. Essentially, if let's say the instruction is, is executing no matter what, then that field will become 1, 1, 1, 0. So meaning you have no condition. You have you have no condition of at the for the instruction. Let's say you have add r1, r2, r3. That instruction will always execute. That field becomes one 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 zero. So now if I go back to my instructions here, if you take a look at the most significant hex value, you will see that it's always e, right? Well, that makes sense because all the instructions have that condition field as their most significant four bits. And since I have no condition here for any of these instructions, that most significant hex number is E because 1110 is E. So you see all of them are, are E. So if I, if I change something here, let's say I change one of these instructions into, let's say not equal, let's say add NE and compile it or assemble it and download it to the board. In the meantime, while it's doing that, I'll show you here. So not equal is 0, 0, 0, 1. So I should see 1 in my disassembly. So if I go back to that view, now this is my add not equal, go back to disassembly. This is my instruction. And now look, the most significant fill field or the most significant hex value is now 1. That, that makes sense. Okay, that checks out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all these fields and we're going to get these numbers just as you see them here in the assembler, okay? So the first four bits, the conditions, uh, the condition field for, again, to summarize, is four bits reserved for the condition of the instruction. And the most common ones that you would see, uh, I shouldn't maybe say the most common ones, but uh, at least for me, the most common ones I've used are the equal, not equal, and the always. So I either do, the, my conditions are uh, do something if something is equal, do something if something is not equal, if the Z flag is not set, or I have no condition, in which case the AL is enabled, which is 1110. So always, or, or AL, that's implicit. If I go back to, to my code here, uh, the edit, in the editor, for example, this add, for example, this add, come on, I need to, Oh, I need to disconnect here. So this add and add al are the same thing. It's, this al is implicit. You don't have to write it. And when I explain this concept, sometimes I uh, say it's almost like when you use in, in, in algebra, when you have x, this is equal to 1x. We don't typically write 1x. We, it's implicit that there is 1 in front of x. The coefficient of x is 1. We don't try it because it's redundant, right? So in this particular code, uh, or these, these instructions, if you don't try it any condition, it is implicit that you're putting this al. So usually you don't see it because it's implicit, right? So I'm not going to, I'm going to remove it. I can append any of these conditions to be uh, actually to, uh, to the instruction, right? So I can put EQ for equal, NE for not equal, I can do CS and so on. Okay, so great. So the first four bits, the most significant four bits are done. Let's go over the next field or the next multiple fields, right? So here I have a zoomed in kind of, this is only the top uh, part of the table I showed you. Uh, this is for data processing. We said the most significant four bits are set for the condition. And follow that, you have 0, 0. This is always going to be 0, 0. So every time you have an add, subtract, XOR, etc., uh, a move instruction, this is always going to be 0, 0. Followed by one bit that is reserved for uh, the immediate value, meaning that if in my instruction I'm using an immediate value, then this bit will be set to 1. If I am not using an immediate value, this bit will be equal to zero. 
what does that mean? Well, if I give you an example here, in this instruction, I am using an immediate value of one. I'm, I'm indicating I'm, I am using an immediate value. I'm adding one to R1, and then I'm storing the results in, back into R1. So I am using an immediate value. Sometimes you don't use an immediate value, just such as this example. Let's say I have an add or an and or X or whatever it is. Let's say I do this. Add R1 to R2, store the results back into R1. In this case, I am not using an immediate value, and that field will be zero. Right? So um, these examples are just for illustra illustration purposes. So uh, don't worry about the execution of the program as a whole. I just wanted to explain what that field is. So going back to that, uh, so after the I field, we have the opcode. The opcode represent what the instruction is. So we are saying that this is a group of instructions. It's the data processing instructions. And we said we have many of them, right? We have the add, subtract, uh, XOR. We have the move, compare, move, move, move not, or uh, move the negative of the number or the inverse of the number and so on. So you need to tell the processor, well, which of them you're doing. You need to tell, am I subtracting? Am I adding? And So there's an upcode and that takes or that occupies uh, bits number 21 to 24. So 21, 2, 3, 4. So four bits for the upcode. And if I zoom in here, hopefully you can see it uh, good. Right. So if this field is 0, 0, 0, 0, that means I'm using an, I'm indicating an AND instruction. Uh, let's look for the add. The add is 0, 1, 0, 0. So in my case, when I have the, a, an add instruction, I'm doing 0, 1, 0. So th that field will be 0, 1, 0, 0 followed by the S uh, bit. If the instruction is updating the CPSR, then that field will be set to one. If, if, there, if the S modifier is indicated in the instruction, then that field will be set to one. An example of that, again, let me switch it right here. So in this case, if I have the S here, this means update the CPSR, right? So if I'm indicating an S in this instruction, that field will be set to one. If I don't have the S, that field will not be one, will not be set to one, it will be set to zero. Uh, the remaining couple fields uh, are relatively straightforward. So RN is the first operand, which is what is my first operand, right? And follow that is the destination register. Um, so if I, I'm storing the result into R5, then I have to indicate five in these four bits. Uh, so, and the second operand, this could be either the immediate value that I'm specifying, or it could be some amount that is represented using 12 bits, but there's a twist, twist to it, which I'll talk about later. So before I, uh, I make this video too long, let me try to do a quick example. And I'll show you how we get the same value that we see in the assembler. So let's do the instruction we were looking at in the program, which was uh, add, right? It was add r1, r1, hashtag one, which basically means add the value, add one to r1 and store it back into r1. So if I, take, if I take a look at this instruction, the most significant four bits indicate the condition. What is the condition here? It's the AL, the implicit AL. This instruction was all, will always execute. So that means that these bits are one, 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 zero. Followed by a double zero for the hard, this is hard coded value of zero, zero. Followed by this field, which indicate whether or not I'm using an immediate value. If I look at my instruction, indeed I am using an immediate value. So that will be set to one. Now the opcode for the instruction, uh, this is instruction add. So if I take a look at my add, add is 0, 1, 1, 0. So 0, where is it? 0, 1, sorry, 0, 1, 0, 0. So 0, 1, 0, 0. Go back here. So 0, 1, 0, 0. Followed by the S bit or the S field. I am not using the S here, so that field will be set to 0. My first operand is this register, which is R1, and 1 in binary is 0001. 
The destination register is also R1, so this will be also 0001. Now the second operand is my immediate value. In this case, it's just one. Uh, and this is actually on purposes. It's a simple value because I do want, I, I, don't, I want to fit it in 12 bits. Okay, so this is how you represent one. Uh, there's a whole there's a whole talk about a whole lecture about how operand two gets uh, worked out, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So now, if you take a look at this instruction, what you want to do is you want to group them, you group these bits into hex values, right? So let's do that. Uh, so these four bits, uh, I'm going to let's start from the left actually. So this is an E, and then the next four bits are zero zero one zero. Right, so I'm going to draw uh, 0010 uh, are these bits right here. So that's the value 2. And then 1000, that's a 0. And, um, oh, that's actually an 8. And then this is a 1, this is a 1, this is 0, this is 0. And this is a one. So basically, I'm just grouping those four bits together to form this hex number on, in the bottom. Now, let's see if this matches what the assembler uh, spit out. So I went ahead and I assembled and loaded this program to the board. So this is my instruction, add r1, r1, hashtag one. The assembler say the value, the machine code for this instruction is E281001. So if I look at my hand assembly, it's E281001, uh, E281 which matches what I have in the assembly, with the assembler. So that's the first video. Uh, I'm going to follow up with uh, one or two more, with more ex uh, examples. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.